Hey everybody, it's Justin. I have been living in Germany for almost nine years. I recently went back to America and my family had so many questions. What is Germany like? Do you think you'll be there forever? Tell me as much as possible as you can. My brother gave me the idea of, to share this on YouTube with everyone, not just my family and friends, but for everyone that may be considering moving to Germany. So I can share with you my first impressions, my expectations are different from reality, and how I was able to make it here in another country. So let's get started. One of my first impressions in Germany was the number of bakeries and the different types of bread that you can try. As soon as I got off the plane, it seemed like I walked up on a bakery. I don't think it was just me walking toward it because I wanted to eat some bread. I think it was the smell that drew me to it. And as soon as, as, soon as I made it to my t city of Leverkusen, I was hit by the different smells that came. And there was probably about five bakeries within a hundred meter walk from each other in the main pedestrian area. And each one gave off a wonderful smell of all the different types of breads from the savory to the sweet. And they all looked delicious. I feel like I could just eat it all. And over time, I probably have tried every different type of piece of bread and every different type of sweet that the bakeries have to offer. And I would tell you, you would not be disappointed. It's a great thing to have for a snack or for something for breakfast or, yeah, just an afternoon snack. The second thing that I noticed is that the animals are not really dangerous. Hmm. Coming from Arkansas, we are the natural state. And that means we have nature all around us and what's included in nature, a lot of different types of animals. Some can be very cute, but some can also be very dangerous. We have snakes, we have bears. I've heard that we even have alligators now. And because of that, when you live in these areas, you are very aware of the conditions and when animals come out and stuff. It's something you just learn as you grow up. And in Germany, they don't really have that. A matter of fact, my wife, when she was just my girlfriend, my wife's first connection with Arkansas, I took her fishing. And of course, I'm watching out for everything. I'm trying to make sure we step in the right spaces. And there was one thing that I did not watch out for, even though for myself I did, but for her, I didn't put much thought into it. And it was fire ants. Now, I was thinking all over the world, there is some form of ant. And I was thinking they all had fire ants, but Come to my surprise, my wife was not prepared for it, and she got bit up from head down to toe. And she was like, why didn't you tell me about it? I said, I assumed that you all had them too. Now since I've been living in Germany, and we love to hike every day, I realized that no, they don't have those type of ants. And they do, I have not yet to come across them in our yard or when we go hiking. Matter of fact, I rarely see any other type of animals other than maybe a few bunnies, birds, um, there are definitely no snakes. They have something similar to a snake, but it's really a lizard. <laughs> um, but there's really no dangerous animals. So if you're coming from, if you're like me, you're aware of that. And it's just nice to let my children run out the door and not have, and there won't be any threats. They don't have to worry about, oh, there's a pile of leaves. Could there be a snake under there? They don't have to worry about that. When we go back to America, however, and we visit my family in Arkansas, I have to be really aware because they, since they didn't grow up around it, they're not going to expect it. So I have to be acutely aware of what's going on. On a side note, the other thing I noticed about the animals are that dogs are basically welcome almost everywhere except for grocery stores. I don't mean the little small dogs that people carry around in, the, in their purse or something like that. No, I mean big dogs. Every now and then I might see a German Shepherd or a Great Dane in the restaurant just laying on the floor beside his neighbor just sitting there. And they're very quiet. They don't bark. They don't disturb the peace. When I see a dog barking in general, I'm like, what's wrong with you? Dogs don't hear, don't bark. But it's just in the, in the country, <laughs> the dogs will keep you up all night. They'll continue to bark so much. But in Germany, it's like it's automatically recognized that they should get their dogs. Um, they should take their dogs and get them trained. The last thing that really caught my attention, the first impression, is that taxes are included in your prices with everything, not just with gas in the States, but as soon as you go to the grocery store and you want to buy something, if it says 10 euro, that's how much it costs. They're not going to come back and add taxes to it. Now, 
Of course, a lot of people like to use credit cards or debit cards, so you don't have to think about that in the first place. But for someone like me, I remember being 10 years old and I went to a store and I wanted to buy my favorite toy. My favorite toy cost $10. I had $11 on me and I was so excited. I went to the cash out, went to go pay for it. And after taxes were added, it cost $11.30. I only had $11. I had to take, make that walk of shame and put that toy back. My children would never experience that because if they see something that costs 10, 10 euro and they have 10 euro, well, they can afford it. They would never have to walk, take that walk of shame like I had to. But it also helps for me. I can already add my things up as I'm going to the store. I already have a roundabout number because like I said, the taxes are already included. It's not gonna be like five or six, $10 extra on top of it after I add everything up. No, it's gonna be relatively done in my head and I can just quickly add it up uh, and keep going. Now, were my realities different from my expectations? I had a few things that caught me off guard that I was not prepared for. The first thing is, is that the stores in Germany are closed on Sunday. Woo! Woo! That took a long time to get used to. I was so used to having a full weekend to go shopping to on either Saturday or Sunday, it didn't matter, and I could always catch up on what I needed. But once I moved here and I realized that Sunday was taken away from me, it took me some time to adjust. I became like so many others. I would scramble on Saturday, try to get at, catch everything. Of course, on Saturday, the stores closed at six or sometimes even three, and so you really had to scramble. So you really didn't have much of a weekend to get things taken care of um, because of that. Um, but after a while, I got used to it. And actually, I quite enjoy it because that means on Sunday, Sunday is a day of rest, which it should be. If you're a religious person like me, Sunday is a day of rest. And that means that your time is used is either go to church or to just spend with your family. It's, it's, there's no thought about, oh, I can go to the store, I can do this. There are some stores that are now open, but it's very few. And then mainly, they, they sell groceries and nothing else. Um, but like I said, I'm used to it now. You know, I really get desperate. The Netherlands is not too far from where I live and they are open on Sundays. But like I said, I've gotten used to it and I just get to relax on Sunday. I get everything done on Friday or on Saturday and I'm good. The second thing that was different from my reality is that uh, coming from Arkansas, we really don't have public transportation. Yes, Little Rock has buses, but it's not the same as in Germany. Uh, you hear stories of public transportation in California, New York, and you always hear the same things. It's crowded, it's dirty, and it's just, it's just horrible. Uh, in Germany, for the most part, the trains are on time and the trains and buses are clean. Now, you might have some problems with trains when there's construction area, but for the most part, everything runs on time. And I always find it funny when some people complain when the train is 10 minutes late or five minutes late. Uh, and then you just got to plan ahead. And so I did not need a car. It wasn't until we moved into the country that a car became more necessary. But if you live in a city, the buses come every 10, 15 minutes, sometimes every five minutes, depending on where you're trying to get to. So as far as getting a car, that's another video. That's another topic, however, but the public transportation system is great here. Another thing that shocked me when we were looking for an apartment is, apartments here normally do not come with the kitchen. You have to buy your own kitchen. You might be renting an apartment, but you have to own a kitchen. Um, in America, it's standard to have a kitchen. Sometimes you might even get an apartment that is furnished. Rarely will you get an apartment that's furnished and rarely will you find a kitchen. Now, if you're lucky, if you move into an apartment where someone else is moving out, they will try to sell you their kitchen. That way, they don't have to lug it out and you wouldn't have to go find one and that works out but if you find an apartment that's already people have moved out there's probably no kitchen and you will have to try to go find yourself one once you're living here you get used to that you plan in advance but if this is your first time coming and you didn't do any research then that's something you need to look into if you're coming here with the international company then maybe they will already provide something for you they will have someone to help you take care of all these things but if you're like me and just came blindly I was not prepared for that. It just kind of threw me off. Another realization that I had was that German food is delicious. 
Now, I would never say it's better than American food. I love American food. I love American soul food. But Germany itself has a lot of great soul food options if you're willing to try it. When I first moved to Germany, I was so hung up on finding things all American. If I heard an American accent, if I sell something with American food, I went to go get it. And the biggest mistake I made was going to German restaurants and they might have a dish called an American plate or some sort, American this, American that. And I would order it every single time. And every single time I would be disappointed. Now they, there are some American specialty restaurants. There's a restaurant called, uh, named after Amer Virginia, so I think I saw one called California. They do have really good American food, but for the most part, if it's a German restaurant and they offer something American, don't order it. Just go ahead and stick to what they are, their specialties, what they're good at. And I'll make a video just about my top five soul food or ethnic German foods that you need to try that are very, very delicious. Um, to continue on this phase is that you're not really expected to tip and like you are in America. The last restaurant I went to in America before I came back, at the end of the receipt, they already had a suggested percent of tip. It was 18% for a tip. And my waiter was terrible. But for some reason, still suggested I give him 18%. It's hard for me to give someone 18% or more when they do a terrible job. I think I ended up giving them about 8% just because I didn't want him to discount the reason why Gabe gave me terrible service because he expected me to give him a terrible tip. So I still gave him 8 to 10%. But in reality, I shouldn't have given him anything. In Germany, you're not expected to really give a tip. You might tell them, okay, keep the change. But for the most part, you don't tip. Now, how do they make their money? Well, the raiders here are paid a normal salary. So they don't have to work for tips and so But they are still good. Why are they still good? Because you're being charged for every drink. Um, I'm so used to free refills in America, at least I was. Uh, and so when I came to Germany and they would charge me three, three to five dollars for three to five euro per cup of drink, I had to learn to slow down. I went from drinking maybe 10 glasses of iced tea or lemonade to let's get it down about two, three. Because that can end up being about 15 to 20 dollars depending on how much you want to drink. The last thing that I realized, a lot of Germans are able to speak English. Now, are they willing to speak English with you? That might be a different story. But for the most part, I've had an easy time navigating Germany. There was always someone willing to help me. My wife says it's my $5 smile, my Walmart smile, as she like to call it. Um, I'm actually pretty friendly. At first, I wasn't. I was kind of shy and standoffish, and I walked around with a mean look on my face, just like many people is from the city. I was focused on what I had to do. Once I started to open up and I started to smile and be more confident, um, I noticed that more people started smiling with me. And if I had problems, there were so many people that were willing to help me. And it's just off the streets. Uh, it, it reminded me of coming from the South in America where people are so willing to help you and, be, and they're so nice, the friendliness. And I have found that to be also true in parts of Germany. I just had to be the one that initiated a lot of time. So when I smiled at people, I got some advice from a, a British guy. We got in a conversation about why it seemed that a lot of Germans were very standoffish and mean. And he said, well, you do realize you're not a small guy. And when you're walking toward people, and you're kind of looking mean yourself. They're not going to be willing to approach you. Just smile a little bit. I got offended at first. Why does he want me to smile? But then I thought about something my mom does. My mom always smiles. There's not a time where she, she is not smiling. I remember asking, why does she always smile? And she said, because... My smile, one, makes me happy, and two, it also makes other people happy. I just went in and I ran with that. Now I smile almost everywhere I go. Not, not because I'm just crazy, but it's just I'm a happy person. And my happiness, my joy rubs off with other people. And so as soon as I have a situation, I have to speak my broken German with people. Um, they are open up, and their confidence of speaking English, because maybe they don't think their English is very good, has their willingness to speak English also improves as they notice that I'm also willing to speak their broken German. Actually, when I first really tried to assimilate into the German culture, it seemed like the Germans really responded even more and was even more willing to help me. So I've had a lot of great experiences. But those were my realities, different from expectations, as well as my first impressions. If you like this video, give it a like uh, and please subscribe. There are other there will be other videos that come down the pipeline that describe more of my experiences, whether it's talking about food, 
getting your driver's license or just making friends. I plan on making a lot more videos. Stay tuned and signing out. Peace.